Hey YouTube, I'm going to try my best to do a review of the Flagpole Knob Trail in Northern Virginia. This is a beginner trail in Northern Virginia. Um, that's where it is on the map if you, uh, you know, are not in the area and you're kind of curious about, like, roughly where is it. It's right there in Northern Virginia. To get far more uh, specific, it is outside of Harrisonburg, so here's a basic map uh, of the smaller area. You can see Washington, D.C. in the upper right corner with uh, Frederick, Maryland, Culpeper, Charlottesville, Waynesboro, and obviously Harrisburg, and then um, right off um, Harrisburg, maybe say 20 minutes from Harrisburg, um, you'll see there is a flagpole knob, and uh, the trail is a pretty lengthy trail, a uh, couple hours depending on uh, how fast or slow you drive, obviously. To get there, you want to basically use Google Maps and you want to search for Blueberry Trail, and I've got it on the screen right now, and that will um, get you on the Union Spring side of it, and then from there it's basically just going straight. You could actually set the GPS a flagpole knob after you go to um, the Blueberry Trail, and it'll take you up there. Um, however, you want to have all the maps saved in your phone um, offline maps is what's called. I'll link a video in the corner if you don't know how to do that. Um, so, because there's no phone service whatsoever. So right now we are just on the road headed toward Blueberry Trail, and for the most part, we're going to be driving straight. So I know I did stay straight, but uh, you do have to stay on the trail. Obviously, um, there is a spot up here where the GPS is going to try to get you to shortcut the path to get up to Flagpole Knob if you're just following Google Maps, and uh, you want to bear left. So we are just about up to the spot, like right here, and it looks like that's the way to go, but you can see that there's a gate, and you can also see that it says no trespassing on both sides of the, um, the trail. So this is not Flagpole Knob, that's private property that I almost turned on to. Um, but as long as you keep your eye out for that, and I'm back on the main road, you can see that this is, once again, it looks like the main road. Um, we will continue going up to Flagpole Knob. I am going to adjust the speed of the video, obviously. Um, we're not driving this fast. Um, so I'll slow it down when there's something that's interesting, and then I'll speed it up when I don't think there's anything interesting. Um, so this largely is a gravel road, as you can tell. And we have not aired down, to be clear with you. We are in two-wheel drive. Um, we have a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, so it is off-road package. Um, but it's stock. It, it, like, so that means it has like the 33-inch tires. We haven't done any kind of fancy modification to the truck. Um, at all at this point. So the first thing that we're going to come upon once we get past some of these uh, gravel roads is basically an open area and that's the area in which people will usually either air up or air down depending on which direction they're going. If they're leaving Flagpole Knob then they're obviously airing up and if they're going up the trail then that's where they would air down if they choose to. And the reason why you choose this area is because um, it's basically gravel roads till you get there, and it's a large open area where lots of Jeeps could easily uh, do that and not get in the way of anybody. So I'm going to slow down the video a little bit so you can see it uh, very clearly, and you can see the very humongously large area, and you can just get off the trail and then uh, air down. Hey YouTube, we are at uh, Flagpole Knob uh, Trail. Um, we are on the Union Spring side airing down and uh, you can see we have our new gladiator and uh, you can see how many jeeps are out here with us there's basically none um, so um, you can guess why there's none so anyway um, we are going to go up that way which is up from Union Springs to Flagpole Knob and you're going to get to see the trail in the opposite direction we have the jeep in, uh, in fun mode you can see and uh, it's pretty nice out here today it's like 65 uh, um, gonna turn to 70 and it just got done raining, so I think that a lot of the people are going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be even nicer. Tomorrow's going to be up in the 80s. So uh, hopefully we will make it up here with no problems and um, with a nice and uh, um, kind of secluded little ride. And uh, this is the Corgi over here wanting to photobomb a little bit. And uh, we will see you guys uh, in a bit. Hey, so basically uh, we're doing uh, social distancing, obviously, because of the COVID-19 thing. And uh, this trail has remained open during the entire COVID-19 uh, thing. That's why we're by ourselves. Typically, it's recommended to go out with another Jeep, but this is Flagpole Knob. Um, and you've heard me say before in other videos that uh, this trail is super 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 easy and if you if you can't tell like it's all gravel roads for the most part there's a very only a very small handful of obstacles and if you're out here on a weekend since it's a one-lane road 
it's a forced reroute technically. Um, there's a very high probability that you'll, uh, you know, find another uh, person up here, um, or at least a couple other people. Um, so the worst case is you'd be stranded for, you know, half an hour, hour until uh, somebody came by that would hopefully give you a hand. So all this is still gravel roads, um, and we are about to come up to something of interest other than, you know, the beautiful scenery and the gravel roads. So we'll uh, slow down just in a second. So up here on the left, that's a walking trail. Um, if you see something like that, that uh, is somewhere that goes somewhere else that's gated, it's probably a walking trail or it might be a forestry only road, um, but for the most part you just, just stay straight. And if you notice, it's pretty difficult to get lost up here because it's all just straight. This right here is a stream crossing and you're going to go through a couple stream co crossings. Um, the motorcycles that you see, I don't think they're supposed to be up here and I don't think they're supposed to be just uh, going around wherever they want, but they are. Um, from my understanding, when you look at the forestry map, um, the forestry map shows that this trail is supposed to be traveled by highway licensed vehicles. So if those motorcycles are highway licensed, then it's all fine, but they look like dirt bikes to me. So uh, that would mean technically they probably shouldn't be here if I pull an knob. Um, but there are two trails um, very close to here. Um, one of them is called Dictum, um, D-I-C-T-U-M. And the other one is Second Mountain, and those two trails that are um, also forestry trails are open to all vehicles, um, ATV side-by-sides, dirt bikes, pretty much everything um, as far as I know, but flagpole knobs specifically I believe is um, highway only. So there are a couple little puddles up here, um, nothing to be concerned with at all, uh, but once again, um, if it's your first time out, you know, every little puddle counts. and. Uh, you know, whenever you get to something like this, just take it slow and, uh, and you'll be fine um, if this is your first time. But for the most part, I mean, this trail is almost like, uh, like a gravel road with some potholes in it, basically. Um, with just a small handful of um, very minor obstacles um, at that, uh, very simple obstacles. Hey, so I'm including all this footage, um, so when somebody is wanting to evaluate the flagpole trail um, from YouTube or whatever before they come up here, um, they can see the complete trail and not have to think that somebody just, you know, cut out a bunch of, like, really cool spots and, or, or somebody um, skipped, you know, showing certain spots. So this whole section here for the next, like, minute or so, um, it's pretty much gravel road with uh, some potholes, uh, but it, it is nothing to, to really be too scared of. And like I said, we are running right now at 8x speed, um, so you know when I was up here, I was driving significantly slower, obviously. But uh, I'm going to try to compress the video as much as possible, um, so then you don't end up with this like you know, monster four-hour video, because um, that's probably how long we were up here. <laughs> um, so I'm, I am going to try to make it as short as possible, but I'm also going to try to um, include as much as possible also. Um, and as you can see, um, this very much is a good spot for, for beginners. If you're like a seasoned, you know, four-wheel drive person, you'll probably find this trail pretty boring. Um, it's just like it's just very a very simple trail. Um, there are a couple obstacles on this trail, so it's not like there are like zero obstacles. I mean, you can see the the front of the jeep kind of moving left and right a little bit, and you can see the the bumps and stuff. Uh, but for most people, when when they uh, they look at this, they're not going to think that it's uh, too complex. The other thing I was saying is, for the most part, you just keep going straight. Um, that spot there was a dead end. You could clearly see it was a dead, a dead end. It just went up to a campsite. There are lots of campsites on the side of the, uh, this trail. So you'll see spots that look like they're spots that you can turn off. And even if you turned off onto them, like what you'll find is just a little campfire or something like that. And it, like it doesn't actually go anywhere. It's just a little opening um, where somebody had a tent and a, and a campfire or a camp ring or whatever fire ring.
So there is a couple thousand feet of elevation change, um, depending on which side you go up, on whether or not you start at the lake or whether or not you start um, on the Union Spring side. The Union Spring side is a more difficult side, so since we are going, to, going up on the most more difficult side, going uphill, we are doing this the most difficult way possible, and you can see clearly um, it's, it's not difficult. So I slowed this down because I actually got confused here and I wanted to just share it with you. So you see that there's a gate up there and I thought that meant that that wasn't the way to go and I thought that that meant the trail went to the right. And like I said, I've never been up here in this direction. But then if you go a little bit farther down here, if you look down the trail, you can see there's another gate. So there's a gate over here and there's a gate over there. So which gate is the right one? Well, if you look at the trail here, you can see that people hardly ever drive down this. Just if you look at it, it's grassy and stuff. People just that's not the way to go, obviously, like because um, it's not very heavily trafficked. If you look at the other road, you see how thick the the, ro the roots are. That's the way to go. And then same thing here. It's obvious, like they don't want you to go over there. They want you to go over here. So there you go. If you're a newbie, there's a little bit of trail navigation for you. You know, you look at the ground and try to figure out where the other jeep's gone, and that will get you where you're going typically. So this is some neat little twists and turns. We are stock, like I was saying, um, in a Rubicon, which means that you know we have 33-inch tires. Um, we don't obviously are not in a Sport, um, but I don't think a Sport would have any uh, problems, even with with these right here. Um, it's, it's just not very deep, and there you know there's a spot where there's a little puddle that we can drive through and stuff. So this right here, the area that we're leading up to, is called the Mud Pit. And this is one of the bigger obstacles at Flagpole Knob. Um, it's a little play area where people drive around and they play in the mud. And uh, you can see here that there are these mud pits. And there's so many of them and so many different ways that you can go. It's, it's like pick your own poison. I've heard that these can get really deep um, during certain times of year. And so for the most part, if you if you don't want to deal with that, you just do with like what we're doing. You just go around the edges and uh, you can find a path to get around all the little mud pits. Hey YouTube, we made it up to the mud pits successfully. Um, they're right behind us, we just went through them. And uh, we're gonna continue on our uh, ride up to Flagpole. So uh, we will see you guys around. Hey, so um, between the mud pits and then the next section of trail, this is one of the more, I guess, interesting areas of the entire Flagpole trail. Um, it probably isn't the biggest obstacle, but it is some obstacles, so I just had to slow down the video, obviously, so you can uh, you can see it. So there are some trees here that they appear to be narrow, but they're not really all that narrow. Um, there are far narrower places like at AOAA, like for instance, the Boy Scout Trail. Um, but for a new Jeeper, um, you know, going between two trees is, is pretty cool. Um, but you saw that, I mean, it was just you just go through them straight. You don't have to make any kind of turn or anything um, between them. So this is a downhill stretch that we're going um, down the trail. If we were coming in the other direction, we would actually be going up the hill, up the trail. So this obstacle would probably be a, just a little bit more difficult going in the other direction, coming from the lake and going to Union Springs. And we are just about on the obstacle that I want to show you. So this is a very small hill climb. I think that uh, in the other video that I posted, I probably even labeled it a hill climb, and I think I parked the Jeep in the other video, like right there on the left, um, behind the, one of these two trees. So there's a bypass for this uh, specific obstacle. So once again, even though it's a very simple obstacle, there is a bypass to make it even simpler, so you can just skip the obstacle altogether. So right here on the left, um, this is where the obstacle is. So you can see that there's some little rocks here, and this is a very, very small hill climb. And for the most part, if you stay on the passenger side, which is the right-hand side of the video, um, it's easier. And if you're on the driver's side where you can see the bigger rocks, it's a little bit harder. And then up here on the right, past where that little uh, log is on the ground, there is a bypass that would just take you all the way around the obstacle altogether, if you just want to be up here on gravel roads, basically. Hey, so um, I'm gonna give you give you guys a tip. So if you're the lead vehicle or the tail vehicle, you should have your headlights on when you're out here on the trails. If you look there in the distance, you can see a vehicle that I'm approaching. 
and uh, the only reason why we were able to easily see them is because they had their headlights on. And yes, we're in the daylight, but you can see the headlights. And that's Jeeper Die from Infidel Jeepers of Virginia. And uh, there's his uh, rig right there. Uh, he makes lots of Facebook posts if uh, you get into Facebook. Hey, bro! You know who I am, right? I posted on your page. I told you I'd see you up here. You said you took the doors off. Yeah, this is new. Well, so, you've you already done that? Yeah, we did all that stuff. Oh my god. When? Well, we had that white Jeep on 40s. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Hey, so what he mentioned was basically the badges that I have on the side of the Jeep. I marked them in red. Um, if you don't know what badge of honor is, I'll link a video in the corner um, where I explain badge of honor. You get the little badges. So, coming up is probably the most technical obstacle on the entire trail. And it's, it's not this little um, water puddle that we're about to go through. Um, but on the water puddles, you just uh, go through them slowly. And as, as long as the water's below the headlights, like you're fine. Um, but for most people, like they kind of get upset if the water even gets to the bottom of the door frame. And I don't think that there's any puddles up here that are deep enough to even get up to the base of the door frame, let alone up to the headlights. Except for maybe the mud pits, like under the, like the worst conditions, if you pick the biggest one to go through. But like I said, you can just go around them, um, the ones that are in the mud pits. And this is not the interesting obstacle either that I was going to mention, um, but there's an obstacle here and there's obviously water. And like I was saying, pretty much if you go up here on a weekend, you're going to see somebody um, else. Like, there's only one trail up here. Um, there's only a couple trails of any interest in Northern Virginia outside of um, Gore, which is a big park. And they're very popular trails, so... So up here, this is the most technical obstacle, um, and I'm just going to pause it just for a second. So yeah, um, that is the most technical obstacle that there is up here, and so for the most part, um, you don't put the tires in the holes, and and you're fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get up a, near that tree, and I'm going to put my driver's side tire um, on the left side where it's kind of like sticking up and you're gonna to get to see me go up in, in a, a stock gladiator. Um, nothing special. I have lockers, I don't think I engaged lockers for this obstacle. And you can see I just went slowly and we went right up it. And that's the toughest obstacle that they have here basically. Um, that's actually part of the trail. Um, there are some other obstacles that are kind of interesting obstacles, um, but I do believe that that is the hardest one and, and you saw like it was like butter smooth. Hey, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit uh, just to kind of get us through the video a little quicker. Um, there are like little tiny rocks on the ground, but I don't hardly want to call these obstacles because nobody should need any guidance. Um, I mean, this is a very minor upgrade from a, from a gravel road. Now, you'll probably ask about like the whole um, spotter versus jeep video that i posted which is a flag pull also and you're going to say that those obstacles were bigger than the one that i just went over that is 100 percent true um, those rocks in the video that i posted are bigger than the ones that we just drove over and they are coming up here on the left and one thing to notice um, is we're going to drive right past them so if you can drive right past them they're not really an obstacle that you have to play on um, and i don't even know if like it's like totally legit that you're on them or not i've heard like some debate about it there they are right there they're on the left and we're just gonna drive right past them but if you were to play on them like you just go down the little rocks you go about 20 feet and then you make a little left turn and you're back on the trail and uh there's no signs up there that say like don't go up there but then i also know that it's not actually part of this road and that uh, being a good uh cheaper you know we're not really supposed to go off the trail so i'll leave it up to your own uh feelings to figure out what to do. Hey, so uh, this is the most interesting area of the trail in my opinion. So basically the area that we're in is between the meadow knob, which is the second knob, um, a flagpole knob, going toward Union Springs. All the little obstacles are like right around this little area for the most part, all the main ones. And uh, once you get past these, um, most of the trail essentially turns into another gravel road, uh, like hours and hours of it. <laughs> um, so that's a pretty big looking pond. I wasn't sure how deep it was, so I went around the edges, um, which is a safe thing to do if you're by yourself or uh, if you're not sure, just go through the edges or go through slowly.
there's a small obstacle coming up here also. Um, it's a small... Um, it might be an articulation test. I'm not really uh, sure the, the right term to use. Um, but it is coming up here. It is right before the meadow knob. And that's where we decided to stop to eat lunch. So there's a couple spots up here that are knobs. The first one is meadow knob and the second one is uh, flagpole knob. So here it is right here. And uh, essentially you just look for the V and then you put the, the center of the vehicle over the V and uh, you should be fine. The V being like the deepest spot on the trail. But I think that even if you went the wrong way, like you went all the way up on one of the two sides, I still think you'd be fine in a stock vehicle. So there is no cell um, service up here, like I was saying. However, we did end up getting, like, I think one bar of service on Meadow Knob, which is like what this is that we're um, approaching where we decided to eat lunch. So while we were up here um, on this knob or flat grassy area, um, we were able to get a little bit of signal so we can post some videos of our little trip. And this is the knob right here. And you'll see that there's a fire pit and a fire ring and uh, there's a little like hole there and we decided that there was a nice scenic view right here so this is where we were going to park and uh, set up our picnic chairs and I decided to park the Jeep in such a way that it would not be near the main trail um, but it also would provide us a little bit of protection from you know, anybody if they came kind of flying up here and we just set up our chairs um, next to the Jeep. So we decided to stop up here for lunch. Uh, I know this is not the flagpole knob, this is like right near it, um, but we decided that it'd be safer maybe to like hang out on this knob instead of the other knob because the other knob might be a little more uh, crowded. And uh, every so often we'll see some motorcycles or something go by, um, but it's pretty secluded up here uh, and you have this like really uh, fantastic view that uh, we're kind of hanging out at. And uh, we got the Gladiator out here and uh, we got our lawn chairs and everything and we're just uh, having ourselves a little picnic. So uh, we'll see you guys around. So the area trail between the two knobs is pretty interesting. It is still also, you know, beginner, I think, um, very, very easy, um, but it has a bunch of little obstacles to play on. And you can see how large this knob is. I mean, you could probably fit 50 cars up there, or whatever, 50 Jeeps up there. Um, it's, the knob is just so big, that, that matter knob. So here you can see um, there are quite a few little um, obstacles. You can see the, the hood of the Jeep kind of going left and right a little bit. This is also um, but the second time we've gone out with a new camera. And so we're shooting this on a GoPro Hero Max um, rather than shooting it on the Canon. And so, you know, it seems like all the footage is much more stable. Um, but what you see now is you see the bottom of the Jeep kind of like um, shimmy up, like left and right, um, while the rest of the footage um, remains remain stable. So I think I think I like this better. Um, the other thing is like the little red glare that was in the last sets of videos that we shot with this camera um, is not on the screen, obviously, and that's because we went through and we painted the um, 67 designs like GoPro adapter from red to black to get rid of that uh, little glow. So it's our understanding, like really soon, once this gets uh, posted, quite a few off-road parks are going to start opening up, so we're going to be able to start recording video again, and uh, there'll be a lot more video probably popping up on the channel. And, uh, um, this is much more um, kind of somewhat of like what you should expect to see um, coming out of us. So if you notice, there, we've gone over quite a few like different obstacles of different sizes, but none of them I really did I even have to stop for. There's a little set of steps sort of to go up and once again, I mean, if you if you looks challenging to you, just go along whichever side looks the smoothest and you'll get up it easy enough. So I don't know if you noticed, but there's some movement and because they don't have their headlights on, did you notice how hard it was to see them um, coming? Yeah, so headlights are good, um, especially if you're the lead Jeep. I'm not saying everybody in the whole like thing has to have headlights on, but um, the one in front especially should have their headlights on.
coming up is a little tiny baby obstacle, but I'll talk about the obstacle just to make people feel a little more comfortable if they're hesitant of coming up on, on you know, out on a dirt trail or whatever um, for the first time. So there's an obstacle right there. So essentially the idea is you put your tires on the biggest rock that you can find and you'll be fine. And the reason why you do that is called straddling. You're trying to put the lowest part um, on the, you're trying to put the hole basically in the center of the Jeep or you're trying to make a V, so to speak. Um, so you want to put the, the tires on the, the largest obstacle and then you're good. So I pulled over to the side here because I saw like another vehicle coming. Hey, so I went out with a camera just to watch this guy and that is a, what looks like a, a, a little like F-150 type truck. And uh, he went up and down this obstacle, no problem at all. So uh, once again, I, I think that uh, it's not too difficult. But I am going to pause it just for a second so you can see the obstacle in question. So here it is here, and for the most part, if you just go to the right, you can avoid all those big rocks, and then uh, you can just go right up it, and no problems. I did pause for a second there, and I think I asked them if they needed any help, and they were fine, and so I just continued. So basically, this is the top of the mountain. Um, we are about 2,000 feet elevation above the lake right now, um, and I think it's like maybe like 1,800 feet above the Union Spring side. So we're pretty high up, and you can see people are camping. You can camp anywhere you want on the side of the road, um, and it's it's totally like okay. There are some fire restrictions that you have to follow, um, just like any other you know force that you're in. But uh, the most of the obstacles by now you've seen, and any other obstacle beyond this point, um, from basically Flagpole Knob down to the lake, um, is pretty simple. So that's Flagpole Knob there. I'm not going to go actually on the knob. Um, it is just a big flat grassy area, and you can see with the COVID-19 thing, everybody is doing social distancing. So there's like at least like 10 vehicles up there. Um, but with that said, I mean there was some space between the vehicles, and I just I didn't feel like going up there. And uh... so at this point, you want to set your GPS to tell you to go to Fitzer Lake. Um, if you go to the left, that takes you to West Virginia, the part of the flagpole trail that I've never done. If you go to the right, it takes you to either Union Springs or to the lake. And then up here, you're going to see we're going to make a left-hand turn off the trail, and that will take us down to the lake. And. Uh... It is coming up here pretty soon. The birds that you hear chirping in the background is actually with a voiceover. It's right here. There's a big open area, and you can see that there's clearly a road. If you had the Google Maps and you had set it to take you to the lake, um, it would have told you to turn there. So it's not that terrible of a uh, navigation skill to, to try to, to figure out how to get off the mountain. So for here on out, for most of the rest of this trail, I mean, you could do this in two-wheel drive, you know, fully aired up. You could probably do the whole thing in two-wheel drive, fully aired up, but um, this side, the side between the top of the mountain and the lake, is the easy side, and it is a side um, that has uh, almost no obstacles. I mean, there's a couple of little tiny obstacles, but there's almost no obstacles. So you'll see, like, cars and stuff at the top of uh, Flagpole Knob, like, sometimes you'll see like ham radio conventions going on up there and stuff, where people are doing little contests and stuff. And all those people come up there um, on this side, no problem. So we are going down the mountain. Um, and once again, I mean, you want to still have your headlights on so people can see you. And you'll see that uh, there are quite a few narrow areas where um, it is difficult to get around vehicles. Um, but if you just pay attention, like right there, there are spots and so the way that it works is when the other vehicle sees you or you see another vehicle that's when you should um, actually look for the opportunity to get over and I, I found the opportunity to get over and then um, I think he spoke to me for a second or two and then they went on 
So it's all it's both people have to look for the opportunity to, to, to get over. Um, don't think that the other person will get over because they may not have the opportunity to get over. There's some more motorcycles. Those might have been street legal motorcycles. It was hard to tell. Um, they looked a little more street legal than, than the other ones. So here's a spot where neither one of us really had a good spot to get over. And uh, basically, they didn't really like the way that I got over, like they didn't think there was enough space. So I ended up backing up down the, up the mountain a little bit more to find another spot. So like I was saying, I mean, you've seen like we've encountered quite a bit of traffic up here already. And you're going to see that there's even more traffic that we're going to encounter. And there's quite a few people up here by, even by themselves. And normally I would not say to go do a trail by yourself, but this tra trail is kind of special in the fact that like so many people go on it and it's just really one lane. I mean, if I had a problem up here, people would have to, couldn't get around me until they helped me. It might sound a little bit selfish, but uh, um, that's, that's the fact of the matter. Um, especially if you go up here on a, a sunny weekend. So that was a switchback. Um, a switchback just means that, like, basically it, it goes from like left to right or right to left. Um, it might have looked like um, it wasn't obvious, but it was very obvious. When, you know, when I was driving, that that was the way to go. And uh, if you could see the Google Maps, the Google Maps is like, literally just telling me where to go. Um, but like I said, there's no signal up here, so don't just assume Google Maps will work. You need to have offline maps. That means that like in Google Maps, like you actually pull a little menu down and you tell it to download this zone. And uh, at the beginning of the video, I put a link in the corner of the video um, on how to do offline maps. I probably could put something in the description of the video also describing offline maps. But like, like you can see, the lakeside is very, very simple. Like we haven't paused for any kind of descriptive information on any obstacles. We're just literally just driving down the mountain. There, there's some water. Um, so even if you are like super, super apprehensive about uh, doing this or whatever coming out here, you could always do the lakeside. Um, and the lakeside, um, like I'm showing here, is, is the easy side by far. And uh, this is the complete flag trail um, knob video that I'm providing you. I haven't left out any obstacles or difficulties. Um, and you'll see the closer to the mountain, base of the mountain we get, the easier you, it gets. And you can even see um, there's gravel. Like it's This is like basically just a, a beaten gravel road at this point. So there is all kinds of capping opportunities on the side of the trail here. And uh, the next video that I post, or one of the next videos, let's just say, will be a camping video where we uh, we did camping up here at the flagpole knob, and then we did uh, Dictum and Second Mountain. So I must have seen some headlights, um, and see, that's what's so good about headlights. You can see them from a distance. And he saw me also, we both stopped, but one of us had to wave the other one on, and I waved him on. And literally the, the procedure is just like yelling at the other person or waving at them or whatever. There isn't really a fancy procedure on telling somebody to, to come forward. Um, there are hand signs for uh, ATVs to indicate how many vehicles are behind you. And essentially like the way that works is like if you make a fist, like that means none. And then you just basically use your fingers. <laughs> so like if you have five fingers, like four fingers and a thumb out, that means that there's five behind you. If you just show them two fingers, that means there's two. And there is like a way that you're supposed to show them two fingers, like it's not supposed to be any two specific fingers, but I think that you can figure it out. I mean, most kids can figure it out. If you said like, show me three fingers, like that's the correct three fingers. I can, I'm just telling you it is. Um, so that, you know, that's something to keep in mind. So we are just about to the area where we're gonna air up at. Normally people air up and air down at the lake. We chose to not do that because we were by ourselves and we didn't want to be near other people. So I was just really looking for 
an opportune place to pull over but normally like at the lake specifically is where people go when they have large groups to fill up because it seems like a cool place to go um, but the other thing is like the lake was covered with people that were fishing so there's a spot right there and this is right next to where we decided to go kayaking. Hey YouTube so we are all aired up and ready to head out we just uh, finished the flagpole knob trail and we are right outside of Switzer Lake it's like it starts like right about right here um, but we decided to air up next to this beautiful stream rather than Switzer Lake so then uh, you know there wouldn't be people like right next to us and stuff um, because of the world events and everything so anyway we will see you on the road and uh, we still have another uh, two hours to drive home and uh, yeah. please thank um, like and subscribe we'll see you guys around Hey, so this is other GPS location, Switzer Lake, and uh, basically you tell the GPS to take you to Switzer Lake, and then when you get on Switzer Lake Road and you turn off the 33, um, that's when you switch to GPS and tell it to take you to Flagpole Knob, and then you just basically go straight. So the three GPS locations that you want to have is Switzer Lake, the one that I have on the screen, the Blueberry Trail that I put at the beginning of the video, and then Flagpole Knob. And essentially Google will tell you how to, to do the whole trail. Um, and you just decide if you want to start at the lake side, then you tell it to take you here first. If you want to start at the Union Spring side, you tell it to take you to Blueberry Trails first. So this is the last little bit of the trail. I didn't want to leave anything out, um, any kind of question at all, like if anybody was wondering. And you can see that this is basically a gravel road that just needs a little bit more gravel. The right hand side of us is actually a huge lake, um, and that is the Switzer Lake over there. You can kind of see it on the edge. And uh, it, this is the Switzer Lake Road, um, essentially that you saw on the map. And to the far right up here, is where the fishing area is, where people air down, and we're not gonna go over there because when I looked through the trees, there was like all kinds of people over there, and because of world events and everything, uh, we don't really wanna go over there. And uh, so this right here is basically um, the spot where you wanna be very careful and turn back onto the highway, and just make a right-hand turn from the trail to get on the highway, or if you're on the highway, you would make the left-hand turn and that will put you here on the flagpole knob trail so thank you and we will see you guys later on